This morning we're talking about boundaries that we have with each other, and we're talking about using our judgment, and look what's going on out in the rotunda right now. One of our colleagues is having a campaign event. One of our colleagues who's running for office is having a campaign event in the Capitol where we are elected to serve and represent all Nebraskans and our constituents who sent us here. What are the boundaries that we have in here? What are we doing with the norms in here, you guys? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like you guys make me seem like I'm such a radical and I'm just trying to do something good for somebody. Do you think it's great to have a campaign event here in the Capitol where we all work and we're elected? Why not just have it on the floor of the legislature? Why not have it up in the balcony? What are the boundaries and the norms that we've all agreed to, and why are we eroding them so much? You know how impossible it is for me to imagine a Republican nominee for president in 2024 who believes that Joe Biden was elected president? Do you get like how eroded not only our political norms and our civility is, and Senator Vargas loves to talk about civility, it is not my favorite topic. So when Megan Hunt is looping around the civility, like we've really gone too far off the rails. Civility is not agreeing to support a bad bill that hurts people because you like the introducer. And civility and political you know, respect and boundaries and normalcy and judgment is not having a campaign event in a state government building. What on earth? Just have it in here. I see your step and repeat background for your photo opportunity. Move it in here. Put it up in the balcony. To me, there's no difference between the rotunda and the balcony because this place is where state government work happens, not where we campaign for re-election. To me, it's very gauche. It's gnarly. I wanted to make a point about the Convention of States LR14 resolution that we advanced to final reading and the deal making that was happening to make that possible from people who do not support that resolution, who know that an Article 5 Convention of States could really, really harm our union in the United States. It could harm marginalized groups. It could harm um, rights that we already have in the Constitution. And what we came to, the, the compromise that was proposed and that was agreed upon is a five-year deal on the Constitutional Convention so that the, the call expires in five years. And I'm wondering if that amendment even has any consequence. It's probably of no consequence. I don't know and I wonder if a state can pass a call for a constitutional convention but qualify that pledge. I don't know if a state can qualify a pledge for a constitutional convention. I think that the remedy for that, if, if you don't want to have a convention, is that after the call happens to go into the convention, you make a motion to adjourn and you're done with the convention. I don't know this, but I would think that that would be how it would work. One minute. Because think how it would work here in, in our body, in this legislative body. If we called ourselves into a special session because 33 people agreed to do so, but then somebody changed their mind and reconsidered and didn't want to go into special session anymore, the solution then is to go into special session and adjourn sine die. You don't get to just like write another letter and be like, never mind, we don't want to now. So why do we think that it's going to work that way with the Convention of States? You guys aren't thinking. You're saying, I want to be nice, I want to make everyone happy, and I want to get my little thing done. So a compromise sounds good, but what does the compromise do? Especially being wary of these compromises that are reached at the 11th hour between the, the second and final rounds of debate. It's haphazard. It's irresponsible, it's poor judgment, and too much poor judgment is going on in here. Thank you, Mr. President.